Welcome to Tips and Tricks with Curve 4. This is Pat Harold of Chromix with some ideas for how you can make the most of Curve 4 software. VPR. VPR has been around since Curve 2. It stands for Virtual Press Run, and its main purpose is to eliminate the need for a second press run during press profiling. Normally, two runs are required, one to calibrate, and a second one to produce the characterization data. So by eliminating the second run, it saves time and money, and it improves profile accuracy, because any press variation that would have been introduced by going through the second run is eliminated by using VPR. We like to say an ICC profile made from VPR data represents a virtually perfectly calibrated press. And another thing it does is it applies smoothing to the characterization data. You know, you might have duplicate patches in your profiling target with slightly different measurement values, so this would smooth all of that out. VPR works by curving the measurements from your profiling charts so they appear as if they were created from a press run in which you used the curves that the P2P and the Curve 4 created. So without curving the profile chart measurement, it would not be useful for profiling because it's from a linear press run. Another way to put this is that Correction curves calibrated from the P2P target are applied to the characterization data set to produce a new data set similar to what would have resulted if the target was reprinted through the G7 correction curves. From this new chart data, an ICC profile can be produced representing the device in its optimum calibrated state. This profile can be used to produce proofs that predict how the device will look through the calibration curves or to convert images into the device's calibrated CMYK color space. And all of this from just one press run. Typically you would have your P2P measurements in your run and have the VPR tab available after you create curves. The target data to be curved is where you select the measurement of your profiling chart. This was a chart that was run when your press was on linear plates just like your P2P targets. So this chart will have been off color VPR will correct this measurement to represent what the chart would have measured if run on the next press run. It's like predicting the future. Then you would choose curb lab values and check curve spectral values if available. Leave the slider on precise. 95% of our customers will use these settings all the time. If your curve and export button does not become active, it's probably because you're not licensed for VPR. So check your Curve 4 licensing to see what you're licensed for. VPR is part of the complete license, which includes the blend tool, P2P list calibration, recal charts. But, uh, but let's get this processed. If you just have the Calibrate license, then you are not licensed for VPR. The file that results is brought into some ICC profile building software like Copra or i1 Profiler, and then you can make your press profile as usual. Well, what I've described so far is what VPR was originally designed to do. A lot of folks have found that there are many other uses as well. You can use this process to predict what your next run will look like. Like if you VPR the P2P from the first run, you can get an idea of how close you will come to being in G7 tolerance, for example, when you run that P2P through a second run. Just a quick way to estimate what your results will be. Also remember you can apply this VPR process to any CMYK data file. Maybe you want to update the aims for your control wedge you use for daily press checks. You can run that through VPR to get values you're expecting to hit after curving your press. You can use this process for smoothing any CMYK file. 
The VPR process does a great job of smoothing. We use this in other parts of the software. You've got this smoothing checkbox here for your P2P measurements. But if you have any other CMYK data you want smoothed, run it through VPR. Don Hutchison does this all the time. Bring in any P2P you want, reduce the control points to a minimum so you have a linear curve, as it were, and then run your data through this curve. Since the curve is a straight line, it'll not color the data with any bias, but what it will do is smooth out any sharp changes and irregularities. Another idea to remember is that Curve 4 can take a profile as an input measurement. Any CMYK profile. So you can use a profile to curve or VPR any measurement you want. Or have any data set reflect the changes that a profile will do to it. A lot of possibilities here. And they might have nothing to do with calibration. Curve 4 gives us an additional location to do VPR in the blend tool. We've always been big on averaging your measurements. That's certainly true for your P2P measurements. You want several of them in order to truly represent an accurate representation of your whole press run. Well, the same thing is true of the measurements of your profiling target. They should be averaged from throughout your run as well. So we now provide a way to do that in Curve 4. You can measure directly in and average them together in the blend tool. Save it with a specific name. Then when you're in your calibration run, you can select the target data and your blended average will be right here to select. The same thing is true from the other way around. If you're in the blend tool measuring in your profiling sheets, you can apply the curves and import curves from your calibration run. You can do VPR directly from within the blend tool if it's more comfortable for you there. Works the same way in either case. More information on the VPR process can be found in the Curve 4 guide PDF that you got with your software, starting on page 54. There's actually a more complete explanation of VPR in the older Curve 3 manual, if you have that. YouTube videos are available showing all features of the Curve software. And of course, you can always contact us at techsupport at chromix.com or sales at chromix.com to get more information about our software. Thanks for watching.